President Joe Biden returns to the U.S. upbeat after NATO leaders showed the world that the military alliance is emerging larger and stronger than ever. Biden stopped in Helsinki after what he deemed a successful NATO summit in Lithuania, where allies agreed to language that would further pave the way for Ukraine to also become a future member. I've been doing this a long time. I don't think NATO's ever been stronger. Ukraine's future path to membership was clearly the most divisive and emotionally charged issue at this year's summit. By and large, I still think it was a success, but it wasn't quite the complete success that was necessary for us to be able to project unity. Fresh pledges of weapons, ammunition and security guarantees from NATO were paired with no clear path for Kyiv to join the alliance. Of course, the Ukrainians are disappointed they didn't get that clear roadmap to NATO membership. I have to say, I personally believe they deserved it and it's a mistake for for the alliance to miss this opportunity. In essence, Western countries are willing to keep sending weapons to help Ukraine to do the job that NATO was designed to do, hold the line against a Russian invasion, but not allow Ukraine to join its ranks. Biden gave an important speech in the heart of Europe, in Lithuania, in a NATO summit where the defining issue was NATO's relationship with Ukraine. And in that major speech, he never mentioned Ukraine's aspirations to join NATO. He never endorsed it. That was a missed opportunity. As to who gets credit for holding the alliance together? Honestly, I believe the reason that the NATO alliance has been sort of um, revitalized in the last two years is because of Vladimir Putin. It's Vladimir Putin who has made everyone work more closely together, donate many billion dollars in arms and euros to um, Ukraine. Both Finland and Sweden abandoned a history of military non-alignment and sought to join NATO after Russia invaded Ukraine last year. Tracy Brown, Associated Press.